Hi, and welcome to Access Chat. I'm delighted that we've got Sarah Simco with us today. Sarah is Head of Business Enablement at Fujitsu UK um, and also Chair of Fujitsu Seed, which is the Employee Disability Network for Fujitsu. Uh, you've also, I believe, just been a, appointed as an ambassador for Purple Space, which is something that's been set up by Kate Nash to uh, enable employees with disabilities form networks and support each other. So delighted that you can join us today. Um, I'm going to apologize because I'm going to run halfway through the, the chat, if not before, no. because time and technology have got the better of me today. So <laughs> I just wanted to at least uh, get you on and say welcome. So thank you very much, Sarah. And can you sort of tell us a bit more about what brought you to work um, and do your work in, in this space? Um, so I've been in Fujitsu for about 17 years. Uh, and in that time, I think I think I've learned a lot about enablement uh, outside of work. I've got quite a lot of experience with family members. I'm from a really large family. So quite a lot of experience of family members living with cancer. Some have won and lost battles, same with diabetes. Uh, other family members and friends uh, living with dyslexia, managing their day-to-day -day lives, uh, ADHD and autism. So I, I see firsthand the challenges that they can face from a working environment perspective. And then for me personally, I also have a chronic pain condition. I have severe endometriosis. That's had quite a significant impact on my life. Uh, the, the pain management being one of them. Uh, and then I, I also have uh, nerve damage to my leg. So getting involved with SEED was probably a bit of an evolution for me as part of my career. Uh, and given it's something I'm really passionate about, uh, about 10 months ago, I decided to step up and get involved in something that I I felt I could help and make a difference in, uh, and and that's exactly what I did. So ten months on, here I am. Really um, pleased to be taking part. Yeah, and and you're a regular on on access. I am. Tonight, I am. So yeah. Well, when when I joined um, the network, I had to take a bit of time to listen to experts, listen to sponsors, listen to allies, listen to people within the community. And access chat is one of the forums that I came across. I was really new to Twitter as well. So that, as well as Purple Space, have really helped to inform my thinking. It's been a great way to connect, really interesting conversations to, to watch and, and listen to every week. Excellent. I'm, I'm going to bid you adieu because I, I, I'm afraid I have to go, but please no uh, problem. carry on with the others. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Bye. I will uh, take it from here, Sarah. So, um, yes, Neil and I are both speaking um, uh, at a conference, an online conference, uh, celebrating yeah. World Down Syndrome Day. And okay. so uh, because of the technology uh, issues we had, as you know, we just wanted to make sure that we got to hear what the work that you're doing. So, um, so you still have Antonio and I. And <laughs> So we'll, you know, we'll learn a lot more about the work that you're doing. But I, um, so, so tell us more about what you are doing, you know, with with and with these uh, different organizations and how they all come together to fulfill the mission that you're doing with your corporation. Okay, um, <clears throat> so Fujitsu have got a, a a fantastic approach to being a responsible business and. That includes a really strong diversity and inclusion agenda. And it follows on from the fantastic work that Fujitsu have done around responsible business over the last two, three, four years. Um, for me in particular, getting involved with SEED, that's focusing on disability, but it's one of uh, various uh, inclusion networks that we have within Fujitsu. So we have at a top level, we have our DNI strategy, and then we have employee networks that sit underneath. So we have gender, we have cultural diversity, we have Shine, which is LGBT, and then we have Seed, which is looking at disability. I think moving forward, we're also going to look at multi-generational as well. The, the premise around our DNI agenda is to make sure it's inclusiveness for all. So we're not trying to restrict and constrain in having separate disability, Shine, uh, gender networks. We're trying to bring it all together under an aligned DNI strategy. So when I was appointed about 10 months ago, for the disability network in particular, we wanted to take a slightly different approach. There'd been some fantastic work since it was set up in 2013 and Kate Nash helped with the creation of SEED. 
there was some fantastic work and my predecessor has done some wonderful stuff. What we needed to do was take it to the next level and we needed to look at the outcomes from a business perspective we needed to achieve over the next two, three, four years and making sure that as an organisation we are inherently building that to within the environment, within the culture, within our business plans locally within the organisation. So what we've moved to is a business outcome driven strategy that really focuses on the core areas of inclusion for us from a disability perspective. So we're looking at disability confidence, we're looking at what we call the five R's and that's looking at recruitment, retention, reputation, realisation and representation and ensuring that processes, policies, communications, everything that would be kit and caboodle with those five R's screams accessibility, inclusion, equality, diversity. Um, and then we're also looking at how we educate and, ma and make aware people within the organisation, be that trying to instil confidence within members of the community that would have a disability or a condition or a long term injury, as well as the line managers to have open conversations and not to have that awkward awkwardness in, in those those kinds of conversations. So the strategy we have is is uh, certainly ambitious. Um, when I joined 10 months ago, um, we had about 200 members from memory uh, as part of the disability network. Um, we've now seen an increase of around 230% of the members. So that's now jumped up to about 665. Uh, it's now a network that is proactive, it's interactive. We're embracing uh, telling our stories. So one of the things that I'm a huge fan of is the power of a personal story and right. sharing our person. And, and I see this on Access Chat actually every single week is the beauty of somebody saying, this is me, this is my challenge, this is how I deal with it, this is how I don't necessarily deal with it all of the time, but this is what I'm going to share with you. And in sharing those personal stories, we are seeing we are seeing the increase in that confidence level. And some of our measures of success are also showing those increases. So the last 10 months, although our plan was um, certainly ambitious, I think it's absolutely start to realise some of the, the um, achievements that we set out for ourselves when we first started. Um, um, I've heard a lot about Kate Nash and the work that she's doing. Yeah. So um, globally, she's recognized that her organization is really helping set the bar high. Will you help um, our, our viewers understand how big Fujitsu is? I oh, so, so Fujitsu, Fujitsu is a Japanese organization. Fujitsu is global. If you're going to test me on how many people we've got globally, I'm going to pass. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's a multinational corporation. Yeah, so it's global. In the UK, we've got around uh, about 11,000 people within the UK and Ireland. Um, so it's a sizable, a sizable organisation. Uh, and, it, and it's also an organisation, I, I think for sure, is demonstrating that they are truly committed and they are truly taking it serious for the right reasons and they are really solid valid business reasons um and, and i've seen that shift within fujitsu in the last the last few years i've been here 17 for my okay. cl and into fujitsu and I, i've seen the change within the environment and the culture it's a definite walk in the walk not talk in the talk right and, and i think it's important for corporations like that to be involved in these conversations and and really to make sure that like you said you don't just create it once and then everybody steps back it's an ongoing thing yeah. that you're you're learning from you're blending yeah. in the best practices i also agree with what you said sarah it's all about the stories um that's one thing i love about access chat and about the work that i do because it, stories help us understand each other. It help, helps yeah. us learn. Um, I, I just think stories are really, really important. Um, I know that Antonio has a question, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Okay.
We had um, we, we had a, a, a diversity and inclusion week in February, and on the run up to that, we took some time out within Seed, uh, which is is the name of the disability network. We took some time out to to make a short film, and the short film was taglined "Be Completely You." So in in October last year, we came up with the campaign "Be Completely You," and it was aimed at uh, encouraging people within our organisation to be themselves in the workplace, completely 100% their authentic selves in the workplace and feel absolutely comfortable in doing so. We created as part of that a short film that we readied for DNI Week. And within there, you have comments from, in, from people within Fujitsu telling us how it's changed their lives, how they see themselves as part of a professional community. You know, if you're a project manager or you're a, a customer service architect, you're always part of a professional community. It's referenced now that people feel part of the SEED professional community. And the comments and the feedback that I see coming through now is that we're changing people's lives. And for people to make those kind of comments, you know, I, I go home with that warm feeling that, you know, today, today was a good day. Today, we did something right. Today, we did something well. And today, we've done something that's going to help sustain a responsible business. So the, the direct feedback that we're seeing, Antonio, from, from our people within Fujitsu is absolutely reassuring me that we're doing the right stuff. Yeah. We had, um, I, I should have made the stats available to myself. We're, we're currently getting ready for an event tomorrow, actually, uh, which is a Purple Space event that we're going to host for Kate Nash. Um, and we'd recently been through the process of looking at how we recruit and how we ensure that we're um, making available appropriate workplace adjustments as part of that recruitment process. And that the whole cycle of from, from application through to interviewing, through to recruitment and into the organisation is one that is um, flexible, that is available to be adjusted to meet the individual's needs. Um, so the, the process with HR, and there's some fantastic stuff happening within HR at the moment, the processes with HR have definitely started undergoing that change where accessibility and enablement becomes the, the core foundation of, of ensuring that that process works. So we're starting to see some really nice stats coming through now. I, I'm, I can share those offline. We're starting to see some nice stats, particularly around the graduates as well that are coming into the organisation. We've had some personal store for graduates that have been through the process coming to Fujitsu and then have shared with us their experience of doing so. And it's positive. It's really positive, which is, is lovely to see. It's lovely to hear. <clears throat> I think end to end in the supply when when we when we say supply chain, I think end to end is part of that supply chain of bringing talent into the organisation. It really starts with your your third party suppliers. It really starts with understanding their organisations, them understanding what we're trying to achieve as an organisation as well, and ensuring that accessibility, inclusiveness, the the approach the environment, the culture, the messages that we're trying to get across is also something that's leveraged and uh, adopted by our third party suppliers. So I would say there's more for Fujitsu still to do, in my humble opinion. Are we, are we on the right track? Absolutely. And we're starting to work with those third party suppliers now through our procurement teams. So I think from a, a HR perspective, it's understanding the impact and I, and I don't know the curriculum of HR practitioners inside out I really really don't that's not my background um understanding accessibility and inclusiveness and enablement as part of the HR procedures 
really important. Being able to work with your procurement and your third party suppliers to make sure that as part of the supply chain we're getting that right is equally important. And then looking at both retention and recruitment, for me, kind of go hand in hand if we're getting it right internally in retaining our talent within the organisation, then we're setting out the plans more appropriately for attracting talent, future talent back into Fujitsu as well. I'm sorry, does that answer your question? So <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's an excellent um, answer, Sarah, because one thing that I work with a lot of corporations, uh, a lot of multinational corporations, and they need the statistics. They need the numbers. That's the way we work in corporations. And yeah. this, this weekend, um, my daughter, Sarah, who has Down syndrome, we were, at, um, we were at a conference in Boston, and we were celebrating. Today is World Down Syndrome um, Awareness Day. And so we were talking about it, and I had parents attend my session on employment, and they um they, they get so discouraged because they really want their, uh, you know, adult children with Down syndrome more meaningfully mm. included in the workforce, and, and they don't think anything's being done. And, and I'm explaining to them, no, 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 we actually are making progress. And um, I was talking about what was happening. Uh, you know, with corporations all over the world like Fujitsu and, and Atos and Woolworths in Australia and j just some really good stories. And um, and some of the stories that we've we've shown here on Access Chat, we did a great um, feature of um, Enterprise Holdings, um, Enterprise Car Rental and all of the, all of the, the different um, organizations that are part of that. And they were like, yeah, but what's in my area? So it's like, okay. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, we're changing this one person at a time and corporations, the way we think is, you know, what are the stats and tell us about the retention and how are you doing the things you're doing to make sure your employees are fully involved and they feel their yeah. voices are being heard and the corporate social responsibility. There's so many different moving parts, but I do want to applaud you for the work you are doing with procurement. <clears throat> Because that's something that I think is really critical. If we can get corporations thinking about this also from the, the procurement area, don't procure products that aren't accessible to all of your employees. Um, we're saying that with countries that are trying to implement the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. But I think procurement is a huge, huge issue. So yeah, I really yeah. applaud those efforts. Do you want Thank to? Thank you. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> there is. And uh, there's, there's much more for us to do. Absolutely. Right. And we're also, uh, there's, there's a great relationship happening now between procurement and our IT function. Um, and again, some fantastic conversations happening about, you know, when we're engaging with those third party suppliers, whether it's hardware, software, services, right. is making sure that we're having those right conversations that says, is this going to be something that can be used by all? And have we considered accessibility as part of that? Those conversations now happen much more frequently they're starting to form part of the standard working practices and i think from a seed perspective what i'm really proud of is we've got some really special people within the network With, within what i call my core working group there's about 25 people that roll their sleeves up and get involved in actioning within this space uh, and there's there's a lovely guy who picks up the role as ex of um, accessibility champion for seed and he has worked tirelessly with procurement with it in trying to build a collaborative approach to how we're addressing that throughout the supply chain. That's really starting to make progress now. They've identified a way forward. They've seen the areas that we need to focus in on. But in terms of progress, and, and you're right, it is those small, small steps that we keep making in the right direction. Those steps are starting to become bigger and hopefully we're gonna really be striding forward, but some lovely work being done across uh, Fujitsu. One thing that I found out, I, before I became an entrepreneur in 2001, I was in the banking industry in the United States and um, what we call corporate America. And I was an executive level in a bank, but I was a mother of a child with Down syndrome. So I was very interested about to learn more about what the banks that I was working for, what, you know, what were they doing for my community? What yeah. were they doing? You know, I was very, um, very interested in that. And there, they happened to have an employment program where they were actively recruiting people with disabilities. And I was a manager. And so I raised my hand and I said, well, I want to figure it out. I'd love to see how 
we could hire people with disabilities in the different sections that I managed. And so I think there's so many ways that employees can actually, whether they're impacted or not, get involved and support the good that our corporations do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think my, my ask, is for anybody that is in an organization any kind of organization whether it's a small one a large one you know if you, if you see something you're not happy about if there's something you think we can all be doing better please step up stand up right. come and tell us how we can how we can get better what we need to do to improve i would i would ask everybody to to try and get involved and, and make their views make their views known i mean having that voice being able to hear the voices of people within the community is, is really what's going to help drive it forward. I agree. And, and I, whenever um, the, our story started with, you know, when my daughter was born, but it, it also started whenever um, I realized that the plans for her to be employed, the, it seemed like the bar was being set low. So I could have complained about it or I thought, oh, well, maybe I could add value to the conversation. And that's why I joined. But I know that yeah. Antonio has another question, so I'm going to turn it back over to him. So re responsible, so if I take responsible business, responsible business within Fujitsu is made up of five pillars. Diversity inclusion is one of them. And then we look at social action, all the, all the corporate social responsibility, all the typical um, components that you would see within responsible business. And that is actually something that's held at a, a global level. Um, there's a gentleman called Duncan Tate. And Duncan Tate is president of uh, America's Anna Mayer. And he, he actually, I saw, I, I watched a video that he'd released um, last week and it talks about being responsible business and it talks about doing that globally. And right across Fujitsu, we're starting to see, uh, not in, in some areas, more mature than others, for sure. Uh, in others, they are starting on the journey, but we're absolutely seeing uh, that responsible business, that diversity and inclusion agenda across the organisation. And we're now starting to come together DNI within the UK and Ireland are starting to engage out with other countries and we're going through the process of listening and learning around what's happening in some of those other countries from a diversity and inclusion perspective. And that, that's great because we're, we're able to identify best practice in some of the, the other areas and it's able, we're able to help um, inform the thinking around the plans that we need to take and adopt moving forward. Um, so progress there's the diversity and inclusion and responsible business is happening right across in terms of bringing that together and collaborating and joining it more that that's not to happen now. Sarah, what, one thing that we would really like to do, if it's OK, is you had mentioned that you have some statistical information that maybe you could share. Um, we would love to share that on our access website. We'd also love to share a link to the video on our yeah. access website. and. Yeah, and that's something that anybody that, you know, is going to the website to uh, get the questions that we're going to uh, tweet with you tomorrow, tomorrow will be able to see now and in the future. So I think it's very important to brag about the corporations that are doing things right, like Fujitsu. Yeah. So we really, really appreciate your time, and we apologize for our technology problems. No. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, it's a pleasure. pleasure. And <clears throat> to, to be asked to take part in, in access chat only only having been in the role for 10 months i i think um this has definitely been the probably the hardest 10 months of my life in terms of work because it's all you know over and above the day job but it has to have been the most rewarding right. 10 months of my career and i think uh forums like access chat are just helping to make the conversation easier to have there's other, you know, other areas like Purple Space with Kate Nash and some of the work that's coming out of the Business Disability Forum. And I'm just really grateful to have, have been asked to come along because seeing what's happened and hearing everyone's conversations over the last few months has been really inspiring. So to, to be taking part is amazing.
Uh, and I will say, as the member from the United States, I work globally, but we're seeing a lot of progress coming out of the UK and um, Europe. And I mean, it's coming from all over the world, but you're really setting the bar high. And we, we really appreciate it. I appreciate it, um, it, you know, personally, and I pr appreciate it from a corporate perspective as well, how we're all sharing with each other. So we really appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, I, I don't know about you, I think there's a shift. There's, there's a, it's palpable. Yeah. You, you can feel the difference now in the yeah. business case for getting this right. Yes, within I, Fujitsu and, and the bigger organizations that we work with in the UK and they absolutely understand the value of the business case and I think that's that's so important to help that shift continue moving forward I agree well said well thank you so much for okay. um, being allowing us to feature you Sarah we really appreciate it so uh, thank yeah. you pleasure thank you. take care Bye -bye.